Good morning, fellow privateers. It's midday here in, in the States. I wanted to get uh, get this video out. Sorry, I've been traveling a lot um, the past few weekends, so I haven't been a, in front of the screens on, uh, on Sundays. But I figure with all the news flow over the weekend and uh, some of the price action we saw last week would be a good time to to get caught up. So let's just go right through um, <clears throat> some of the more important markets. We'll look at the charts. Here's a 10 year yields. You can see here we've got a new low daily close in yields at 147.5. If you go back, to, if you go to the weeklies, we are now, um, this past Friday was the lowest weekly close of this whole cycle, which is interesting. Um, the number of cases in Italy, I believe, risen to over, over 100 and which is kind of interesting like northern Italy was pretty much the last place I would expect to be have a, a coronavirus outbreak South Korea numbers are are increasing um, over the weekend as well uh, you saw the negative price action and risk on Friday a uh, little bit of a bounce late in the day but uh, either way I we're expecting, uh, I'd be surprised if we don't gap open, you know, I don't know, quite a, quite a lot, at least in the, you know, in the S&Ps and NASDAQ. Um, if we go to the S&P chart, the daily chart, you see here on Thursday, we had the bear, just barely, but we had a bearish engulfing, and it had a nice bounce off that, uh, that area, 3340. Uh, Friday made a lower low down to 26 ish, 28. For me, the big support really comes in here right around, call it 33.05. Set your alerts there. Um, you know, we could get those in Asia. Uh, set the alert on here. And we've got, uh, so that's the SP. You know, the weekly was a, uh, Weekly chart we made a new high last week and then reversed lower, closed kind of uh, middle of that previous week's bar. NASDAQ weekly looks pretty similar. Uh, um, if we go over to the daily, you can see we had the outside reversal bearish engulfing bar on Thursday and pretty much opened and went straight down on Friday. Again, a little bit of a bounce, but you can see here, like I just have a, a little parabolic um, on this. That's with the green uh, plus signs and the red plus sign. You can see here on the daily, it rolled over, and um, you know now if you're playing from the short side, you're just wrong above these all-time highs. So the risk reward's pretty good, you know, from the short side. Uh, let's take a look at gold. Gold had a big big move up last week. It was up uh, four out of the five days. Um, there was another one, you know, just using these parabolics, you can see that uh, back on the 13th, the 14th, that was Friday on Valentine's Day is when that trend kind of <laughs> turned higher again. So 1643, you know, we're got, we got to go, you know, this is only about a, six months, but you know, you go back, actually, if we go to monthly chart go way back you can see where we are um, back to levels we haven't seen since I believe 13 early 13 and uh, you know if the risk off continues I don't see why we can't uh, can't keep going 1800 is a lot of uh, targets for a lot of uh, Love technicians. Uh, silver looks like it's about to explode as well. Um, here's a weekly. We did have that big spike in September of last year. Um, I suspect we'll be taking that very out. And if you look back into uh, back to 17, 2017, let's see if we can tighten this up. That high was right around 20, 21. So. My guess is first stop is a retest of last year's highs, 1965, and then 21 from there. Uh, as far as currency goes, let's take a look and see. Dollar Mex had a big 
bullish engulfing week. This is no surprise. This uh, has been a favorite carry trade. If we look at Euromex, which is the real carry, uh, you can see similar. So it's had a big move down since uh, kind of August, September. And, uh, just with risk off in equities and some of the other markets, people are starting to uh, take some of those carry trades off. Dollar yen, the biggest story in FX for the week. Uh, take a look here. So we had some weak GDP data, I think it was minus 6.3%, much worse than expected last week. And, uh, and here's your day. This was about a four standard deviation move, three, I think three plus standard deviation move on the 19th. Shot straight up and it was even rallying when equities were selling off on Thursday. Um, you can see this is Thursday's bar, you know, equities were down and uh, dollar yen was closed up at 112. It's the highest close we've seen in a long time. <laughs> Excuse me, Wednesday or uh, Friday, we had an inside bar. Um, so I guess, you know, play either side of Thursday's bar. That's the weekly. So we did close off the highs of the week at down at 111.53. But, uh, you know, the highest weekly close we've seen really since uh, back in April of last year. And that'd be, it, it's interesting, you know, we were talking amongst ourselves last week, uh, you know, what happens if this has turned into a domestic story in Japan? Um, you know, there's talk of canceling the Summer Olympics and the uh, Tokyo Marathon. And um, you see those growth numbers, more stimulus, you know, probably coming out of the Bank of Japan. Um, you know, the market has been playing the risk on, risk off with with dollar yen equities for years now, and the algos have that programmed in. If that starts to change, uh, and you start seeing yen weaken when equities weaken, that's a complete regime change, and uh, I think it would uh, it could put a lot of uh, if algos don't switch and and, and fix their fix their models and quickly that could uh, that could turn into a bloodbath. You know, we haven't seen Japanese economic data really move the yen one way or the other for years. Um, so that's that's one to watch out for. You know, we're paying very close attention to what the yen is doing. Um, there were some charts out over the weekend about dollar Korea. You know, a lot of cases in uh, in Korea. You know, more supply chain disruption. So it's not just China; it's Japan. You know, it's China, Japan, it's South Korea. Who knows what's going on in North Korea? Um, you know, here's dollar dollar Korea weekly, you know, highest weekly close we've seen since back in uh, August 19. Um, overall, on the um, the dollar got hit pretty hard on Friday. Um, and one of the things we've been talking about is this U.S. exceptionalism trade where They've been buying stocks and they've been buying dollars. So we're thinking now if that changes, if the U.S. is, you know, the best of the worst, the safe at Haven, they've already limit long equities. We've seen all the um, extreme, you know, RSI measures and sentiment measures and put call ratios and everything else that, that's measured. Uh, the P of the S&P is got up to like 19, I think, on Thursday or Friday. Uh, I think Bamel said that if it gets to 20, you just sell stocks because it's they're overvalued at that point. Um, but now it does feel like, it, you know, if equities could sell off, you, it, it's led by the U.S. equity market, uh, in particular tech, the dollar is going to suffer as well. And this is after the dollar index has made um, some... Is that a big move? It's up, you know, two plus percent on the on the year, and you know we took out got up almost to uh, 100 on Thursday, 99.90 before the big sell-off. So uh, you know here's here's a really good level right here, you know below 99, 99.25 in the dollar index, and I think you could see some more dollar weakness. 
pretty much everyone's favorite trade going into 2020 was short dollars. They have been completely carried out. Uh, and, you know, long EM, they're getting destroyed in long, e in long emerging markets as well. And just, just take a look at something like dollar Turkey. Um, that's an ugly bar on Friday, but you see the march higher since the start of the year. You know, dollar Turkey just went crazy. Um, so long emerging markets and and uh, and short the dollar was a favorite, and I would imagine most of the players have been have been wiped out on that trade. Um, take a look at the euro. You know, it's going to look similar to that dollar index daily. Big reversal higher again. You know, selling stocks, U.S. equities, selling the dollar. Uh, Dollar CAD's kind of, you know, really the past week it hasn't done much of anything. We've been trying to play long Canadian dollar. Um, take a look at oil. Oil had a nice bounce off that just from under 50 bucks. Got up to right around 54.50. Had a little doji day on Thursday and then a down day, but nothing, nothing dramatic. But that's, you know, that's a, that's a slowdown in, glo in global, global growth. Um, so we, you know, definitely watching, uh, definitely watching Brent and WTI for, for signs of this, uh, you know, global growth slowdown. Um, so that pretty much covers all the charts, you know, keep an eye on the headlines. There's more cases coming out. I would imagine the news flow is going to be pretty negative on the open, um, which is, you know, still five hours from now. Uh, so have a listen and get ready because it could be a wild week. Right. Uh, good luck this week, and you'll hear from us on the open tomorrow. Cheers.